everybody. Welcome to Hidden Heights Farm Vlog. I'm Rachel and this is Kaya. Hi guys! And today we're going to share with you what is in our goat maintenance care kit that we use. Since um, our uh, Spanish goats are having kids right now, we thought it'd be a good time while we had a lot of this stuff out to share with you what we actually keep on hand in case of emergencies and during our kidding season here. So um, I'm going to go over with you what we've actually got and Kevin's going to help me out. Okay, so I'm going to go over a few of the items here with you. Um, a digital thermometer. Just a cheap digital thermometer. You will need this anytime you have a goat that is sick. You want to take their temperature first um, to see if they've got a fever and what's going on. So, and keep this just in your kit. Don't mix it up with, with your human Yeah, kit. and one thing nice about some of these digital thermometers are... When you're trying to get it inserted into a goat's rectum, they're not always going to stand still. And if you're by yourself, uh, it don't always work out so great. So try to get one that is a quick read that takes their temperature very quickly. Right. Um, another item, scissors. You always need a pair of scissors in your kit um, for all kinds of different reasons. Yeah, you never know when you're going to need you scissors. You never know. Another thing is this septic septic powder to stop bleeding and we get this from Amazon we'll put a link down below we use this a lot um, when we trim hooves and accidentally cut it in the quick and they bleed so you'll put this powder on there um, and this is our trimmer for hooves this we use a whole lot this blue coat antiseptic spray you can use this on any animal basically we use it on chickens goats dogs um, whatever has an open wound you can use this on now you have to be careful because it does come out purple and it will stain it stains your hands it stains your clothes so be very careful with that but this stuff works great one one thing great about the blue coat spray is if you have an animal that has an incision or it has a wound of any type on the flesh uh you might see the flies and bugs and stuff extract to that wound this stuff right here will keep them off of it and even if underneath like in their armpits and on their bellies if you kind of see it's rub raw or anything like that any kind of heat you can put that on there too um, another thing that we use a lot is the bolus gun. We do that a lot. Um, bandages, you always need bandage and it's also good to have gauze. I don't have any right here with me, but bandages and gauze, always good to treat any kind of... And that's the Coban wrap, like right. if you were going to do a splint. Right. Sports, we've got that one that's like a sports adhesive wrap, self-adhering. That way you don't have to use electrical tape or duct tape or something and this right here will allow you to kind of put it on tight but it won't cut off their circulation. Right. And it doesn't stick to their fur or hair and hurt when you have to take it off. Alright guys, so Rachel mentioned this bolus gun. This is an important item if you have goats. So if you've watched some of our last videos, like the video where we brought the Kiko goats home to our farm, you guys seen us work them in the trailer before we released them out into our pasture. And one of the things we administer to them is a copper bolus. I don't know if they can focus in on it. This little capsule has tons of little shards of copper in it. That's what the And the brand we use is this Ultra Cruise. We get it on Amazon. It's about the cheapest place you can get it. And I'm going to say it again. Copper is the most important supplement you can give your goats. Copper is so vital to goats. If they do not have it, they, their immune system will drop. They'll get parasites. They'll die. They cannot maintain a healthy look or a healthy body at all. Uh, they'll have tons of problems. Their hair will look gross and uh, just wiry. They have to have a copper bolus. You cannot get copper into a goat unless you do this copper bolus to maintain the levels that they need. Uh, you can supplement with loose trace minerals like we do, but that still is not enough. Uh, they will not get enough copper in their system from loose trace minerals or from feeding them anything with copper in it. And just so you know, a lot of people raise goats with sheep. You cannot feed sheep anything copper because it will kill them, just so you guys know that. And it helps them to be very parasite resistant if their copper levels are up to par. Right. Um, where we live in Oklahoma, our soil in Oklahoma is number one on copper deficiency in our soil. 
So yeah. it's very important to replace the copper in their systems. All right, and the next thing we have is this drench gun here. We've had this one for a long time, but it works great. It's got your milliliter uh, or CC measurements on here. Pretty much shove it down in the corner of their mouth and squirt whatever doses you need. And usually they always swallow it, it works great. Then you're just normal syringe. You can get pick up at Tractor Supply or any any local co-op usually has them, you know, for administering uh, medicine. And then we have this little tube. This is one we got from a pharmacy. Just a dropper to squirt medicine in their mouth. We use that a lot for like our kids. You know, that yeah. you just barely drop it in there. And this thing right here is something most goats don't want to see. Little boy goats. So this little green band here for those of you that do not know, it's just a big, thick rubber band, and this little pair of pliers squeezes it like that, and you stick their testicles through this green thing and close it shut, and in about a week or so, their testicles fall off. And uh, we do not castrate any of the goats here on our farm anymore, just because they do better at market. And uh, the only reason we would do that is if we had one we wanted to keep for our weather. And... The Pepto-Bismol. This is something you would only probably use in an extreme emergency. If you have a goat with extreme scours where they're just having diarrhea really bad and losing a lot of fluid and getting dehydrated, this is probably a last resort here. Um, most of the time you're going to see goats start to have loose stool and diarrhea. You want to find out why they're doing that. Um, usually it's either because of internal parasites or coccidiosis as well and we'll talk about that medicine we have but this right here will usually is a last case scenario type thing you know if you see a goat that's been having scours for a while really loose stools you want to give them a dose of this and and do your research online and see how much you need to give them before you do give it to them and talking about the coccidiosis um hold this for a second all right so we we actually feed our goats right now, we're feeding them a high protein 18% uh, grain feed that has a medication for coccidiosis in it. But coccidiosis will kill your goat pretty quick and I'm not going to go into explanation of what that is. You guys need to read it. But this stuff you can pick, up, pick it up in any farm supply store as well. You pretty much just give this to them in their water and it works for all animals, chickens, goats, sheep, dogs, everything. You can use it for a lot of animals. It's good to have on hand. All right, what else? Um, I don't have any with me, but Pedialyte is really, really good um, to give any of your goats. Yeah, to get, if you get a goat that is dehydrated, Pedialyte, if you have to squirt it down their throat or whatever, we've saved many goats over the years with Pedialyte right. to get them electric lights back in them and to keep them hydrated. And molasses. Yeah, molasses, molasses gives them like an instant uh, energy. And this right here, I think this has molasses in it. You guys have seen me do videos with this. This saved several of our goats earlier this winter when our pygmy goats started having babies. This is Power Punch. You can get it on Amazon as well. Uh, it's a high potency nutrient energy drench for cattle, sheep, and goats. And it has a ton of vitamins in it. Uh, I'm sure you guys can't see that, but... We use that a lot. Usually a lot. this is like an emergency deal as well. Or if you just have a goat that's kind of uh, just lingering around, lounging around, anemic type, if you're treating them for worms and such, you want to hit them with that and it'll give them a little boost of energy and keep them going so they don't just lay down and die. Also, and Go ahead. Sorry. Also, you can give that to uh, your uh, nannies that have just kitted. That will give them a boost of energy as well. And all it, it has all the vitamins in it right. as well. So. Just to reboost their system there. But if you are treating a goat for worms, if you do the eye test, look and see if it's pink or white. If it's white, you're going to give them uh, a dewormer. But if you're doing that, that means they're anemic. And this red cell right here is it works wonders to put iron back in their blood system. And I think you want to do that for like 10 days straight. And it will help build up the iron back in their blood if, if they have parasites that have been sucking their blood dry. And, uh, you know, if they deplete, if they get depleted on blood, they're not their self. They'll lay around and just be really anemic. Won't eat, won't stay with the other herd. And this red cell helps get them back to where they need to be.
but you have to do it with the dewormer. You can't just give them the red cell. You have to fight the problem that's causing the blood loss. Right. Oh, let's talk about the, uh, got this, just a normal little spray bottle here. And what we use this for is we will dilute this permethrin. Uh, this is permectrin. It's a little bit different. But you can spray this on goats. Um, the label does not state for goats on here, so do it at your own risk. We've used it for years on our dogs and our goats, and reason four is for fleas and ticks, mostly ticks. Um, we've never really had a problem with the fleas, but the ticks, we've got problems with our goats getting ticks because you know where we live here in the foothills of the Ozarks. We live in a really wooded area. we got a lot of ticks in our area. And... Uh, the permethrin, if you spray them down with this permethrin, mix it, dilute it with some water. You can get on Google and do some research on what other people do. But anyways, kind of dilute it down, spray their backs with it, spray them pretty good. And it helps keep the ticks off. Spray their legs, spray their backs, and it kind of gets in their system and it keeps the ticks off of them. Does it help with flies also? It does. It's, it's actually for flies yeah. and stuff. I thought people so. spray it down in their barns. You can spray it in your barns or around your barns and feedlots and such and it helps with the flies but it really does wonders on the ticks as well right um iron we got an injectable iron this is like if you have goats that are on their last leg from parasites you inject this into their muscle and they get instant iron from that vitamin b complex we yes vitamin that. b we use this a whole lot this is an injectable as well or you can squirt this in their mouth orally just something to have on hand and let's talk about this one so if you've seen the our last video we posted our update of our spanish goats having the babies selenium and vitamin e this is two things that they really need as well selenium keeps goats from getting the white muscle disease if your land or your property is deficient in selenium your goats might get a white muscle disease and uh it, it makes them really weak where their legs can't really hold up their weight and such and if you guys seen our last video i gave uh well i didn't do it in the last video but i talked about i gave that little baby goat two milliliters of this uh selenium just in case it had the white muscle disease because he was walking around on his knuckles instead of on his hoofs on his front leg so that's something to have on hand as well uh usually you can find it at a uh, co-op or a feed store and we actually put this in our um bolus gun in the end because it's real sticky the bolus gun holds the little capsule but you know if you're if you're trying to fight a goat and hold it and stick it down its throat because you got to jam this thing down its throat to get it to swallow the capsule right you squirt the selenium in the end of this bolus gun to hold the capsule in that way if you turn it upside down or anything it doesn't fall out right and then they also say this will actually help the copper bolus stay in the bottom of the stomach um so it'll stay in their system longer instead of exiting their their digestive system too quickly and next we got a probiotic paste this is something that if you got a goat that's having some bathroom problems or loose stool uh this will actually help put the uh, enzymes and uh, bacteria back into their rumen and get them trying to get regular again where they're going to the bathroom right and put the healthy bacteria back into their gut to help them digest food and of course we've always got clean scalpels here yeah we got emergency uh, scalpels emergencies. super sharp razor blade sharp yeah so be very careful with those and we've um, actually we've actually never had to use them on goats but it's pretty much for an emergency if we had to do like an emergency right. c-section if we had to cut into a goat for some odd reason or and an abscess you can use them for abscesses or if they have abscess. like a piece of skin hanging off that you've got to cut off that's really good to use on that also and then we would follow up with of course our purple antiseptic spray right. and uh we don't have a we've never had to do it but we don't have it in our kit um we have the stuff to do it we just don't have it in our kit right now uh if we had to do like emergency staples or stitches right. a lot of places sell just a staple gun that comes preloaded with staples if you had to do an emergency type thing like that they do sell those ivermectin uh, then we got an ivermectin which we have found has not been working in our area here lately uh, we haven't had a parasite problem in the last eight months here with our goats since we started doing the copper bolus so we just keep this on hand um, if you guys got goats and you live in the woods like we do i just found out something here recently uh, deer carry a parasite 
and they can transfer it to goats and I can't remember the name of it but it can get to their brain and one of the only medicines that works for that is ivermectin and one of the signs of this parasite in goats is the goats wander around like they're drunk kind of like they have a goat polio or something they'll wander around do circles they're not right in their head they almost act like they're like they have mental problems and uh, if you ever experience that, contact your vet first. But right. the ivermectin, our vet told us that, that that will kill that parasite. And that's about the only thing that will kill the parasite. So just a, just an FYI. All right, guys. So next, we got an antibiotic. Uh, this is a lycomycin. We have, there's several different brands of uh, antibiotics on the shelf, penicillin and such. Um, this is just one we choose to keep here. This one hasn't been opened yet, and I don't know if you got to keep this in the ice box or not. Some of them you have to read because some of them you have to keep refrigerated. Right. But we haven't had to use antibiotics in a long time, thankfully. But we do. That is one thing. If you have any kind of animal, you need to keep on hand. So now we're going to talk about what we do, what we keep in our kitting kit, just for kitting season only in case of emergencies. You always want to have just extra rags, like towels and rags towels. or shirts old shirts anything you can use that you need to wipe off a baby with just in case if you guys watch my birthing video uh of the baby goat that was just born you noticed it came out and it had the sack all over his face and his head and he's kind of having trouble breathing mm -hmm. i didn't jump in because the mom instantly knew as soon as she turned around that that baby had that on his nose and that was the first thing by instinct she went for she started cleaning his nose off his airway where he could breathe but some women don't do that. So that's where these towels and rags come in. You, that's the first thing you want to do anytime you help deliver any kind of baby is clear their airway because once they're out right. of the sack, they depend on oxygen. Especially during winter time. You do not want to let them stay wet very long because they will get hypothermia and die. Um, so that's very important. Also, what I don't have pictured is a heating pad um, for winter birthing. Um, we always keep those on hand and an extra heat lamp and an extra heat bulb right. that's something really good uh to keep during winter time only and then some of the last things we have for our kidding kit kid colostrum super important mix always it always have this on hand mix it up with some warm water and it's ready to go and for those of you that don't know goats especially and a lot of babies if they do not get their mom's colostrum they have like a 90 percent chance of dying uh, just because they can't build their immune system up they might live for a couple weeks but eventually they're going to catch a sickness or disease and probably more than likely die if they do not get any of the colostrum and this is a colostrum not from their mom it's from the store but it still has the same good stuff in it but it's never 100 percent replaceable right. for the mother's colostrum and then our save a kid goat milk replacer we keep that on hand at all times. Yeah, you never know when you're going to have a... Say one of our mama goats died, we have this to go to. Right. Say lightning struck or a coyote killed one of the mamas and the baby's still alive. We would be able to just go get a scoop of this, mix it in some hot water, and have instant milk replacer for the babies. Right, we've had to use that often. Um, and I think the last thing we're going to talk about... Where you about that? So, this right here is an ear tagger. Pretty much just pierces their ears. Uh, we try to label our goats with these ear tags that are numbered. I got some coming for these black Spanish goats. They're not in yet. And then our scapies tag for Oklahoma. This allows the USDA and other agencies to track down if a goat had a weird disease or something that was going to be able to be transferred to other livestock. Uh, say a sheep or a goat had a disease that could wipe out hundreds and hundreds of goats This number on this tag would allow that department of uh, the US I don't know what it's called the USDA to track down where that goat came from what farm it came from and they could help um, Make sure that the problem goes away and isn't you spread through other goats and stuff So that's right. something that you have to do if you sell livestock here in Oklahoma and I think anywhere in the United States Especially goats and sheep. I know for sure. I'm not sure about cows and such. But you got to have these these numbers. They're individual numbers. 
And it has your farm number that's tied back to your farm on there. Also, one thing I forgot. Oh, yeah, that's, <laughs> this is a Pritchard nipple. If you guys wonder, this is one of the best ones we found that works the best. That's the name is it's a Pritchard nipple. And we always keep little 12 ounce bottles. Yeah. They work the best for us um, to have on the farm here for our little goats. So and we use that often. And I think that's about it, guys. So we just had some of this stuff out because it's kidding season here for us. And we wanted to share with you guys. We get a lot of questions and email and comments and such on if we could show you guys some of the stuff we use for our goats. And we get a lot of people asking questions on how to save some of their goats that are having problems and such we're not vets and we we haven't we don't have medical training or anything like that we just know from experience so you don't follow anything that we do or what we tell you it works for us and we can't guarantee it'll work for you always contact your vet we do this mostly because emergency reasons uh, we can't always get a vet here in a timely manner because we live really remote so we got to kind of learn to do things on our own here right and a lot of it's preventive also just you know sure. helping boost them back after kidding um getting their energy back and all their minerals and everything so a lot of it is preventive so always contact your vet in case of emergency don't rely on the information that we gave you like kevin said we have right. no medical training whatsoever just over the years experience but feel free if you guys do have questions on uh like livestock guardian dogs and the goats uh, we do have a little experience and you know trial and error we've done it all i mean nothing ever goes right nothing ever goes perfect but we try to learn from it and uh, if you guys have problems with us hit us hit us up and uh, we'll try to help you guys out if we can yeah definitely we've done this for 15 years and it's just been trial and error for us all right guys so we're going to end this video thank you guys so much for watching leave a comment below and we'll see you next time thanks guys Bye bye